Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Candice and I started my channel out about a year and a half ago wanting to show my journey uh, when we bought our new property uh, because it was basically a blank slate and I wanted to show us uh, creating all of the flower beds, um, vegetable beds. Uh, I want to get chickens and rabbits and things like that. And then I've since built a small cut flower farm. Um, so my channel is primarily been about my cut flower farm journey, but I still include a lot of the flower beds and landscape and vegetable gardening, gardening things as well. So if you're new here, welcome. Thank you for stopping by. I hope that you consider subscribing. And if you're not new here, welcome back. So today I wanted to talk about all of the things that I've been doing the last couple months and all of the things that I'm going to be doing this month and next month, February, uh, to prepare for the upcoming gardening season. And some of those things that maybe you should be thinking about doing as well so that you're prepared and you're not, you know, in the throes of spring and, you know, you don't have a lot of the supplies that you need to start seeds or just, you know, start your growing season. All right, so I'm just going to jump on in. If you want to pause this and get a pen and paper uh, to take some notes. For starters, let's talk about some of the things that I've been doing for the last couple months. Um, one of the things that I wanted to share was my flower beds around the house. Um, I've done a lot of things to those uh, this fall um, before, well, it's winter now, but this fall, um, I didn't get around to editing all of the videos that I filmed. The flower bed on it's actually the side of our house, but we use it as the front of our house. I call it flower bed number one. <laughs> um, I posted a video last fall, not the one that just passed, but the one before that, um, doing a you know makeover part one, uh, but I never really did a part two or three or four. Um, but I had um, gotten a bunch of roses and a few other things on clearance and um, put those in there. Uh, when we moved into this property, uh, they had a couple flower beds around the house, but they were just covered in like eight inches, nine inches of rock, and they had just a couple evergreen shrubs in them. Um, so it took us a long time to get all of those rocks out. It was a lot of, uh, it was some very intense labor um, to get all those rocks out. And uh, we finally got them out of flower bed number one, and I worked on that one first thing when we brought, bought this property. And then we've slowly been trying to get the rocks out of the other two. Now, going back to flower bed number one, um, until we figured out the plans for where we were going to put our little orchard, I went ahead and put five uh, fruit trees in that flower bed and then kind of planted some other things with them. Um, I finally uh, decided that I want to put the orchard behind our barn. We call it a barn, but it's actually like another garage um, that is uh, at the back of our property. Right now, my uh, son has a swing set, a uh, play set back there, so I'm just kind of edging the playset with the fruit trees and then eventually when he gets older and um you know he doesn't have that playset then um, i will fill it in with more fruit trees and then i got a bunch of uh shrubs and bulbs i got a bunch of shrubs on clearance this year at lowe's that i put in that flower bed and then i purchased a bunch of bulbs this year which if you haven't checked out my bulb order um i posted a uh I posted a video on all of the bulbs that I ordered for next year, which if you haven't seen that video, I suggest watching that one after you watch this one. Um, I purchased a ton of bulbs for this coming uh, spring. I cannot wait to see them all blooming. And then I also purchased a bunch of peonies that I placed in that bed also. I kind of stuck with a symmetrical uh, garden plan for that flower bed. I'm gonna have three hydrangeas in the bed. And then in between the hydrangeas, I'm gonna put two evergreen uh, shrubs or trees and then in between each hydrangea and evergreen, I'm going to have roses and peonies. And then I'm doing kind of like a scallop design in front of every hydrangea and evergreen. Um, and I'm doing um, daffodils and tulips in that scallop design. And then behind those scallops, um, I'm putting every other one is going to either have bearded iris or silvies. I'm also sticking with a very pastel um, light color scheme for that flower bed. I'm sticking with a lot of uh, light pinks, lavenders, yellows, um, and colors like that. So moving on to flower bed number two, uh, when we finally got all of the rocks out, I was finally able to put in my lavender hedge. 
I've wanted to put in a hedge of lavender for as long as I can remember. I'm so, so excited about finally having one um, for the rest of the bed. I do have a plan um, for things that I want to put in that bed, but for this year, um, since I did purchase so many bulbs and tubers and things, I decided to just do rows of tulips, daffodils, and ranunculus. So I'm going to have, I think I did three or four rows of tulips in the back, uh, three rows of daffodils in the middle, and then I'm going to have probably enough room for two rows of ranunculus um, in the very front. And then, like I said, I got a bunch of uh, shrubs on clearance. So the ones that I didn't put in flower bed number one, I put those in the uh, very front of our landscape. We have a pretty large front yard that looks at a house that isn't the prettiest. So I'm trying to put as many things in our front yard as possible to try to create like a screen um, so that we have something a little bit prettier to look at. And I'm super excited about all the shrubs that I got on clearance. I got them for a super, super good price. And most of them I can use for cutting for bouquets for foliage. I was able to get nine bark, uh, viburnum, uh, wigella. I think that's how you say it. Um, a winterberry or hollyberry, virea, sedum. And then there were a few things that won't uh, be able to use that won't be able to be used for cutting, like uh, Rose of Sharon and, oh yeah, Burning Bush. I completely fell in love with Burning Bush this year. Um, I've seen it before in people's landscapes in the fall, that like huge red uh, bush. Yeah, sorry, I had an interruption. Um, I think I was talking about the Burning Bush though. Um, I completely fell in love with it. I had seen it in people's landscapes before, but I never knew what it was um, until um, I seen it on clearance <laughs> um, at Lowe's and I looked it up and realized that's what I had been seeing in people's landscapes in the fall. So I picked up a few of those. Like I said, that's not something that I can use for bouquets, I don't think anyways. So that is, um, I think, all the shrubs that I got. So after that was the bolts got all the bulbs planted in the ground except for a uh, little small bag of tulips that I held back. I'm going to try to force them in the summertime and then uh, some of the daffodils I ordered. Unfortunately, the daffodils I ordered from Jake, um, they never came. Um, I got an email saying label created and then I got an email a couple days later saying arriving late um, and it's been about a month and a half. So I'm not sure what's going on with that. I'm still trying to figure out um, like whose end the problem, uh, you know, happened on. I don't know if it's lost at the post office or, you know, if the label was created and like something happened, I don't know. Um, so that kind of stinks, but I am happy that I got all those daffodils um, that I found on clearance. I think I got 440 um, that I got on clearance. So very thankful that I got all those, um, which is a lot more than I ordered to begin with. Uh, but I got them for such a good price. I was able to get a lot more of them. And I'm, I'm just so excited about all the bulbs. I cannot wait until they start blooming, especially, you know, the daffodils, they'll come back every year and hopefully naturalize. But I think I'm most excited about the ranunculus. The ranunculus, like every time I see a picture of a ranunculus online, I just, they're just so gorgeous. Uh, Fresh Cut Kentucky, Tanya at Fresh Cut Kentucky, her, her rows of ranunculus are just so beautiful. I don't even know what to say. I'm just, I'm so super excited about the ranunculus. Uh, last year, mine didn't do very well because I let them get root bound. I started them way too early and then I was scared to plant them out while it was still cold because I had never uh, planted anything before my last frost date. I had never grown any cool flowers before. So they suffered quite a bit because of that. So I'm hoping they do well. Um, I did run into an issue with them, uh, but I'll talk more about that here in a second. So after I got all the bulbs in, um, that was pretty much the last thing I needed to do until, uh, until it was time to start seeds. So I just spent uh, the last few weeks uh, dreaming about the gardens, the flower beds, the cut flower beds, the veggie beds, and everything that I wanted to grow in them. Uh, and then realizing that 
I don't have the room or the budget to grow all of those things. So then I, you know, spent time narrowing things down to, you know, a smaller list and planning those things out, planning uh, where everything would go and how many of each flower and things like that. I still need to plan out uh, a few things in more detail, but for the most part, I planned out uh, about how many of each thing I'm going to grow and what varieties I'm going to grow. And uh, that brings me to the next thing, which is to get my seed order in. So I finally finished my seed order this year. I ordered from Johnny's and GOC primarily, but I also got a few things from Baker Creek, Swallowtail Gardens, and, and that's it. And I also ordered all of my seed starting supplies, things like uh, trays, um, fish fertilizer, uh, seed starting mix. I also ordered my landscape fabric and my drip irrigation a while back. I forgot to mention uh, that was one of the first things I did because last year I spent entirely too much time pulling weeds and watering. Um, having a two-year-old and my husband being at work all day, I only had like his nap times to get things done or when my husband got off work. And by the time he got off work, it was usually way too hot to really want to do anything or to be able to harvest flowers. So I ended up spending almost every minute uh, watering and pulling weeds. And then I didn't have any time to really harvest flowers or try to advertise them. Uh, not nearly as much as I wanted to. So that was one of the first things I did was order landscape fabric and drip irrigation because if I can at least decrease the amount of time that I'm spending pulling weeds, then I will have a lot more time to harvest the flowers and enjoy the flowers and advertise selling them. I also just placed my order for roses, dahlias, lilies, and gladiolus. There's two roses that I've been wanting for a while now and Florette posted that uh, they were able to get a 20% off code. So uh, through Heirloom Roses, um, I ordered Earth Angel and Coco Loco. Uh, Coco Loco has been out of stock every time I've looked. Um, and I was kind of waiting till I could at least get both of those and save on shipping. So super excited about those. Um, I see, I see those a lot, um, on Instagram as like in bouquets, uh, but they're not advertised as cut roses. At least I know the Coco Loco isn't, um, I'm not sure about earth angel, but earth angel is this huge, like peony, uh, shaped rose, very blush pink. And then Coco Loco is like an antique, um, it's, it's like an antique brown with like a pinkish lavender like undertone so so beautiful and then i ordered three david austin roses um i haven't ordered david austin roses before so i'm super excited about that um the first one i ordered is a climbing rose um it's a pink climbing rose i wanted to do a pink uh light yellow and like lavender purple rose um all growing up the same arbor i've seen a picture of that once and it was just so gorgeous um i haven't uh, I haven't decided on the two roses for the purple and yellow one yet, uh, but I got Strawberry Hill for the pink one. And then for the two roses I ordered to use in bouquets, I ordered Charles Darwin. It's a really beautiful yellow rose. And then I ordered, and then I ordered Olivia Rose Austin. Um, those, the Olivia Rose Austin rose, um, it seems to be one of the really popular ones because it has, it has good re disease resistance. Uh, it's good for cutting. It's good for, uh, it's got a good fragrance like all around just has a lot of good qualities to it. I'm trying to pick roses that have a good disease resistance that can take our humidity here in Southern Indiana because we usually have like 70 plus uh, percent humidity. I want to choose roses that are good in the landscape and for cutting, um, but I'll, and I also want to choose roses that have a good fragrance. Last year I got a rose from, I'm not, I'm not sure where I got it, but uh, you know those roses that you can get in like the bags, um, it's got like a bag around the root ball. I picked up one last year called Belinda's Dream. It had the best fragrance. It has a really fruity fragrance. And so I'm trying to find cut roses that are also uh, have a fragrance like that. I think I'll probably just do a separate video uh, going in de into detail on the actual roses that I got. Uh, so stay tuned for that. The next two things I wanna talk about, I did in the wrong order. Uh, the first thing was pre-sprouting my ranunculus and anemones and then building the hoop house. Um, I announced in my uh, bulb order video that I did purchase all the materials for a hoop house and I didn't think it would be that big of a project to put together. So I went ahead and pre-sprouted all of the ranunculus and anemones 
and then started building the hoop house. So now the ranunculus and anemones uh, need out of their trees very, very bad. Um, and we still don't have the doors finished on the hoop house. But hopefully that's going to be done soon so that I can get uh, them planted out. Okay, my voice was going out pretty bad, so I went ahead and took a little bit of a break and charged my battery. So hopefully my voice lasts a little while before it starts to go out again. But back to the ranunculus. Um, what I was saying is it took us longer to do the hoop house than I thought. So the ranunculus and anemones uh, have began getting very large roots and uh, you know a lot of top growth. So what I've started to do, which um, I was told isn't the best thing to do, um, they don't like being disturbed uh, very much, but I also know they don't like being root bound um, because that's the mistake I made last year. So uh, what I began to do is, um, you know, when you pre-sprout them, you put them like, um, kind of like you plant tulip bulbs, like you put them almost touching because you're just wanting to see that little sprout and a little bit of like uh, hair-like roots begin to grow. So just so you know that they're viable and then you only plant the viable ones. Um, it's easier to get them to like wake up from, you know, the dormant um, stage and to also not waste a bunch of space um, in case you have, you know, 30% of them not be viable. So I've began to uh, take them out of the trays and give them more space. So instead of putting, you know, 30 or 40 in a tray together, I've been spacing them out to where there's only, you know, 10 to 15 in a tray. And I'm hoping that will give me enough time uh, between now and when we finish the hoop house um, to, you know, uh, to give them a little bit more room to grow. And then the next thing after pre-sprouting the ranunculus and anemones, it was time to start some seeds. So I have began the 2022 seed starting, which I am super, super excited about. It always seems like, you know, so much, so much time has passed since being able to seed start, even though it's really only been, you know, maybe six or seven months since my last succession sowing. Um, it just, it seems like forever. Um, and it used to really feel like forever uh, whenever I used to only grow warm season tender annuals. But now that I am doing cool season hardy annuals, then the time goes a little bit faster. So the first thing that I seed started was Lysianthus. Now, last year was my first time growing Lysianthus and I just fell in love with them. I love, I just love the look of them. They look just like a rose to me. Um, only you have a lot more color options. You have the long straight stems. Um, at least at least a, t a two week base life. You don't get the scent that you do with roses, but I just, I love Lizzie and Kim. So this year I ordered five entire series of Lysianthus. So I'm going to be growing every color in every series of five different series. And then I'm also going to grow a couple specific colors. I still have some of the single colors that I ordered last year from Johnny's and Swallowtail. And then I ordered just a couple more single colors from Johnny's from the Voyage 2 series. If you know anything about Lysianthus, those you want to start between 12 and 13 weeks before your last frost because they grow extremely, extremely slow. They start out extremely small and then they grow extremely slow. They, they do a lot of uh, root growth before they put on any uh, above ground growth. Um, so that is one reason it seems like they grow so extremely slow, but they actually are doing a lot of work uh, below the soil. Um, I learned that last year, my first year, starting Lysianthus, but it seems like as soon as they get that point where they're ready to go in the ground, they sit for maybe another month and then they just take off. And they grow extremely fast after that point. And then next were Snapdragons. Uh, those you want to start between 8 and 12 weeks before your last frost. And I didn't mention this, but I still haven't received my GOC order. So um, hopefully I will get that before too long. Uh, because that is where I ordered the Lysianthus. Um, well, that's where I ordered most of my seeds. 
The other ones can wait a little while though, but I need the Lysianthus as soon as possible, um, as well as the Snapdragons. Um, I did order uh, quite a few things from Johnny's. I ordered a lot of the Hardy Annuals from Johnny's just in case something happened, uh, because I know that a lot of people didn't get their um, GLC order for about eight weeks, um, which I planned for that. I, I placed that order several weeks ago, um, but just in case, I went ahead and ordered uh, most of the Hardy Annuals that I wanted to grow this year from Johnny's. So for the ones that I've already got from Johnny's and the Snapdragons that I still had left over from last year, I've already started those. And then I've also started the Rocket Snapdragons that I got in the uh, uh, Grow Along seed packet from Nicole. Um, if you follow Nicole at Flower Hill Farm, she's doing a Grow Along and I joined that. So I got Rocket Snapdragons from that. And then the last thing I've started from seed so far is uh, Carnations. I'm growing some new varieties of carnations this year, as well as the ones that I grew last year. I just absolutely fell in love with carnations last year. I loved the look of them with the snapdragons and the bachelor buttons. And a lot of mine, um, I had to pull out because uh, they got, I believe they got root rot um, because where I planted them, um, it floods really bad in that area. So I am restarting all of the colors that I grew last year, as well as some new colors that I'm super excited about. Uh, one of them in particular is the pink one with the like raspberry pink uh, picotee edges or picotee edges. I seen that one in a bouquet at uh, the grocery store one day and I've been trying to get my hands on that variety ever since. And I found a variety that I think is going to look a lot like that one. And then the other one is a very light yellow color. So that's everything that's been going on here lately. Now, what's next? So next, what I need to do is I need to burn the holes in my landscape fabric and get those ready for transplanting my hardy annuals, the, the lysianthus, the snapdragons, the carnations. All those are considered hardy annuals. And I also have lots of other hardy annuals that I plan to... <clears throat> Excuse me. I also have lots of other hardy annuals that I plan to experiment with this year. And so I need to get the holes burnt and, you know, get uh, the ground ready for and get the landscape uh, fabric ready to be planted in. And then and then as soon as we get the doors on the hoop house, I will be taking the trays that are ready outside. Um, starting with just, you know, maybe an hour and then increasing the amount of time that they're outside every day, getting them used to that cooler weather and then planting those out, which if you, um, if you do things correctly with the ranunculus, uh, you pre-sprout them in 50 to 60 degree temperatures and you don't have to do a whole lot of hardening off. Uh, but since the hoop house wasn't ready, I moved them inside under my grow lights and so they've been in 70 degree temperatures. So I definitely have to harden them off and get them used to that cooler weather. But other than that, for the next couple weeks, I'll just be starting seeds, getting my ranunculus and anemones transplanted. And before we know it, we're gonna have beautiful tulips and daffodils and alliums and all sorts of things popping up out the ground. We'll be starting all of our warm season crops, all of our vegetables and things like that. It'll be here before we know it. And I'm super excited to share everything with you and to hear about what you guys are doing in the comments. If you've made it this far in the video, I greatly appreciate you sticking around and listening to me for this amount of time. And I would love if you would do me a favor and let me know in the comments what you're gonna be, what are some of the things you're gonna be growing this year? What are some of the things you're super excited about? What are some of the things you've been doing to prep for the 2022 garden season? Um, if there's anything that was helpful in this video, then I would love to hear about that in the comments as well. I would love if you would give this video a thumbs up, but that's going to be it for this one. Thanks again, and I will talk to you in the next one. Bye, guys. Can you hear my three-year-old yelling at my dog to stop barking? <laughs>